Step 2. Out a product. So we have seen in the previous lesson what an inner product is. If you take two states, A and B, then it's formed by multiplying the bra for A with the ket for B. And what you get is this expression right here, which is just a complex uh, scalar, so it's just a number. But what happens if we change this product here, if we change the order of it? So instead of having bra of A times the ket of B, we have the ket of B times the bra of A. Well, in that case, what we have is we are multiplying a column vector, b0, b1, by a row vector, a0 star, a1 star, where I remind you this bra, that's the conjugated vector, and transposed. And what you in fact get is now a matrix. It's a two by two matrix with complex elements. So even though we have only changed the order in which we are multiplying the cat and the bra together. It is a huge difference. One is a scalar, the other one is a matrix. But why uh, are we doing this? Is it just some mathematical manipulation or there is some reason behind this? So the other products turn out to be very, very useful for two reasons. Reason one, they can describe measurements. And reason two, they lead to a new description of quantum states. So let's begin by talking about how we use outer products to describe measurements. The best way to see that is to actually consider what happens when we apply either uh, the outer product of 0, 0 and the outer product of 1, 1 to a general uh, uh, state psi. So we just multiply them together. We've got uh, uh, the outer product of 0, 0 times the ket of psi. I just write out psi like this. I haven't done anything new here. And then I multiply out the, um, what's inside the brackets. So we have this expression, alpha times the ket of 0. And then we have the inner product of 0 and 0. And we said that since 0 is a normalized state, that's just equal to 1. So this first term will simplify to alpha times the cat of 0. On the other hand, this second term, we have beta cat 0 times the inner product of 0 and 1. And you can check for yourself, but these two states are in fact orthogonal. So what it means is this term uh, is equal to 0. So this is our final expression. So we see that we have, by applying this outer product, 0, 0, onto our general state, psi, we have changed it to such a way that it's now just the ket of 0 multiplied by some complex factor. So we say that the outer product, 0, 0, projects onto the state of 0. So we see, if you remember from previous lesson, that this in fact um, gives us the effect of a measurement in the Pauli z-basis where the outcome of the measurement is plus 1. Let's see what happens when we apply the outer product of 1, 1 to the, our general state psi here. Again, we write out the state psi, we multiply out uh, the terms inside the brackets, and what we have is the following. But this time, we have uh, alpha times uh, ket of 1 and times the inner product of 1 and 0, which we said was 0. Therefore, the whole expression simplifies to beta times 1. Again, I remind you that 1 is a normalized vector. Therefore, the inner product of 1 and 1 is equal to 1. So we see that the outer product of 1, 1 projects onto the state uh, ket 1. So it uh, encapsulates the effect of measuring in the Pauli z basis where the outcome of the measurement was negative 1. So how about measurements in other bases? Maybe you can already guess from how we have been writing down the outer products for 0, 0 and 1, 1. Let's say that we want to measure in the Pauli x basis. Well, that's rather simple as well. We just take the state uh, plus and we form the outer product with itself. So we've got the outer product of plus plus acting on our arbitrary uh, ket psi and we get the following. So again, we are projecting onto the state uh, plus with some complex uh, scalar in front of the whole thing. So we are measuring in the x basis where the outcome has been plus one. Similarly, where the outcome is minus one, we have the outer product of minus minus applied to psi. We got this uh, complex scalar multiplying our state minus. And it works in the same way for the Pauli y basis uh, for both uh, plus one and minus one outcomes. So again, this time we have, uh, we take the basis states for the Pauli y 
and we form the outer product, we apply to Psi, we get a different uh, uh, complex scalar, but we are projecting onto uh, I, and when we have the outer product of minus I with itself, we are projecting onto the minus I state. So, this is a point of uh, notation, but it's very, very useful to be aware of how we actually write down these uh, projection operators. Often in uh, books or in other works and in papers, you will see that we designate the projector with a capital Greek letter uh, pi. And just to be clear, we also tend to write down the basis in which we are measuring. Here I just am writing it down in terms of some capital B. It can be any basis that you want. And we also indicate uh, which measurement outcome the projector corresponds to. Is it the plus outcome or is it the minus outcome? So, for example, if I have uh, pi b plus, then I route, write down the uh, ket for that uh, basis vector b plus uh, forming out the product with itself. And in the same way with the minus. So, as I said, the top index designates our basis, the bottom the outcome of the uh, measurement. And here are some examples which we have seen already. But just to give you a clear picture, an outer product of plus plus, we can just succinctly write as this for the minus outcome like that, and in a similar way for the y basis and the z basis. We have seen how the uh, outer product can be useful for describing measurements. Now let's see uh, how we can use it to describe states. So we have uh, seen in the previous lesson that a quantum state is described by a ket. For example, our ket for state 0 is given by this uh, column vector. Our ket for state 1 is given by this column vector. And for a general state psi, it's just a column vector of alpha and beta. On the other hand, we can write down states as outer products as well. In particular, we can write down the outer product of 0, 0 as the following matrix. We can also write the outer product of 1, 1 as the following matrix. And both of them actually represent our states 0 or state 1, just written in uh, matrix form rather than vector form. So for a arbitrary state psi, we can uh, form the outer product of the state psi with itself, and we get the following matrix. On the diagonals, we've got mod alpha squared and beta mod beta squared. If you notice, these are real numbers because we're taking the mod and squaring it. But the off-diagonals, they are complex scalars.